Well, this is not great news here. Uh, with global turnover, we see that turnover is increasing not only in the United States, but in, in the world as a whole. So that is something that we have to deal with. And why do I talk about that? Because I think onboarding has a very big part to play in terms of turnover as a whole. Okay, so then we have this new person and they start the job. They walk in the door, they are excited. It's a new job for them, they're hopeful, they're optimistic, but at the same time, they're wondering, is this going to work? And so actually from the very first time that they connect with you as a company, they are starting to ask this question. Now, if they've accepted the job, that you've passed the first hurdle, that they believe that you know you are going to be a good company to work for. But they don't know that for sure. So as they walk in, they are assessing how things go. This is that onboarding period, right? And so what we see is, and we all know, that we have the highest level of turnover in the first year. And in fact, sometimes people don't last even the first couple of days of the week. And our onboarding program can have a big influence on that as well. So this is indicating that a quarter of our turnover happens in the first month and a half. And that by the first half year, 70% make a decision whether they're going to stay or leave. That is that a really critical onboarding time. First impressions, you know, like they say, you only have one chance to make a first impression, and that really does matter. And the issue is that people have choices now. Our, we have basically a zero unemployment rate. Anybody who is capable and has skills and wants a job can pretty much get a job. And so they don't have to stay with you if they don't want. And so I think that really puts the burden on us as employers to make that first impression as positive as it can be. And here's the other piece, that every generation is becoming more and more mobile than the, six, uh, the generation before them. So what we're seeing is that people are going to have more jobs over their work life, and they may even have more careers over their work life. And if the baby boomers, you may see that they will work for 20, 30, even 40 years for one job, for one company, but I don't think you can expect that now. Not that it won't happen, it will happen, but more and more people are likely to stay in jobs for shorter periods of time. So I don't think that's an expectation that we can have, that we're going to hold on to them forever, but if we can uh, encourage them to stay for an extra year, two, or three, uh, then that's going to make good sense for us. And I think onboarding, I know onboarding has a big impact on that. And just the fact that people leave, it's really expensive and it's really disruptive. The lowest number I ever see in any of the research is that it costs 25% of a person's annual pay uh, to replace them. That, that's the low number. The probably the most common number is about 50% of someone's pay. So imagine, you know, if someone is making $40,000 a year, it costs $20,000 to replace them. There are direct and indirect expenses. There's all this disruption. And even when you hire a new person, how long does it take for them to really start paying their way? So it's clearly in our best interest uh, to retain people to the extent that we can. So here's a quick example uh, of all of this. Let's just pretend that we have a company with 100 employees and that our turnover is 23%, which is pretty normal. And let's also just assume that these people are on average paid $20 an hour and that it costs 50% of their pay to replace somebody. So what does it cost this fictitious company in a year? Well, it's almost a half a million dollars. For a company of 100 employees, I would suggest that that's probably quite a bit of money. Now, are you ever going to bring that down to zero? No, that's not going to happen. But what would happen if you could reduce your turnover by 10%? Maybe that's getting close to $50,000. Still no small amount. In fact, it would pay for one of these employees. And if I assume many of you on the call today are HR people, it's just one last person that you have to, to find and hire.